All right, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to solve inequalities by multiplying and or dividing by positive numbers, multiplying or dividing by negative numbers, and then using inequalities to solve real life problems. So, multiplying or dividing each side of an inequality by the same positive number produces an equivalent inequality. So, if you can see in these examples right here, if we multiply this inequality by two on both sides, we get uh, an equivalent inequality. And then same thing here, if we divide by positive two on both sides, we get an equivalent inequality. Okay? So this is very similar to uh, addition and subtraction when it comes to doing the same thing on both sides. Uh, we'll talk about what happens when we multiply or divide a negative number in a little bit. All right, so we have two examples here. So I'm just gonna rewrite x over eight is greater than negative five. And we treat this exactly like an equation. So I wanna see what's happening to my x value here, and I see that I'm dividing by 8, so to cancel out division by 8, I can multiply by 8 on both sides. So I'm going to draw my parentheses on both sides, and then put the 8 next to it to show that I'm multiplying. So these 8's cancel, and I am just left with x, and I just bring down my unaltered inequality symbol, the greater than symbol, and then negative 5 times 8 is negative 40. Okay? So if I wanted to graph this, I could do my number line pick my three values, negative 40, negative 39, and then I'll put negative 41 here. And then this is not equal to, so I'm going to do an open circle. And since it's greater than, I want all the values that are larger than negative 40, so my arrow is going to go to the right. For part B, I'm going to re rewrite my inequality. Negative 24 is greater than or equal to 3x. Now I always want to see what's happening to my variable here and we're multiplying by 3. So to cancel out multiplication by 3, I can divide by 3 on both sides of the inequality. And now I get x, and then I have this greater than or equal sign that I'll bring down, and then negative 24 over 3 is negative 8. So now I have the inequality, negative 8 is greater than or equal to x. But when I graph this here, what I want to do is I actually want to have my x term to the left. That's what, that's what works for me. That makes it easier uh, for me to graph, and I would strongly recommend that you do that too. So I'm going to rewrite this as x is less than or equal to negative 8. And the reason I'm doing that is because x is less than or equal to negative 8 is the same inequality as negative 8 is greater than or equal to x. In this case, all of the values that we want need to be smaller than negative 8 or lower than negative 8, and that's true in both of these cases. Uh, to graph this, I'll graph it over here. I'm going to draw my number line. have my three values, negative 8, negative 7, negative 9. And then we do have the equal to here. So it's less than or equal to. So I'm going to have a closed circle. So I'm going to fill in my circle here. And then since I want the values that are less than or equal to, I want the values below negative 8 and including negative 8. So that arrow is going to go to the left. So this arrow uh, represents all the solutions to this inequality. And now we're done. So when we multiply or divide by a negative number uh, with inequalities, uh, something different happens. So I'll read this. When multiplying or dividing each side of an inequality by the same negative number, the direction of the inequality symbol must be reversed to produce an equivalent inequality. Okay. So if we see here, negative 6 is less than 8. In order to keep that true, when we multiply by negative 2 here, I need to flip this symbol. Okay. So instead of less than, now I have greater than. Okay, and then same thing over here. I have 6 is greater than negative 8. I divide by a negative on both sides, negative 2 in this case, but I have to flip this symbol as well. Okay, and I'm just going to show you why very quickly. So let's say that I had negative 2x is less than 4. Okay, well, if I didn't flip the inequality symbol, what I would do is I'd divide by negative 2, and then I would get x is less than negative 2. No, this is wrong. What I did is wrong. What you need to do is flip the symbol, but I'm just showing you for this example. Um, there is another way to solve this. If I wanted to, I, would, I could do negative 2x is less than 4. And what I could do is I could add 2x on both sides. So I'd get 0 is less than 4 plus 2x. And then I could subtract 4 on both sides. I could do minus 4. So now I'd get negative 4 is less than positive 2x, and then I would divide by 2 on both sides to cancel out this multiplying by 2. 
So I get x, and then I get the less than symbol, and I get negative 2 here. So I get negative 2 is less than x right here. And then if I rewrote this with my x term first, I would get x is greater than negative 2. Okay? So this is, this is the same uh, inequality here, this one and this one. But if you look here, my final answer, if I solve the problem this way, gives me x is greater than negative 2. But if I forget to flip the symbol, I get x is less than negative 2. And these aren't true. So that's why we have to flip the symbol in order to uh, make sure that our inequality does stay true. So instead of leaving this as less than back up here, whenever we are dividing by a negative number, we'd have to change the inequality symbol. So we just flip it. So this, instead of less than, it'd become greater than. Okay? So that's why that works that way. Solve each inequality, graph each solution. So I'm going to rewrite part A. 2 is less than y over negative 3. Okay? So uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing is I want to see what's happening to y, and I see that we're dividing by negative 3. So to cancel out division by negative 3, I'm going to multiply both sides of this inequality by negative 3. But whenever I'm multiplying or dividing by a negative number, I need to flip the inequality symbol. So this less than is going to become a greater than. So now I get negative 6 on the left side, and then these, these cancel on the right side. So I get y on the right side and negative 6. Whoops, I forgot the negative sign. And now I see that my y is on the right side of my inequality. I prefer having my y on the left side. So I'm going to rewrite an equivalent inequality that looks like this. y is less than negative 6. If you're ever wondering how to rewrite the inequality, uh, if you see this inequality is pointing at y, and this one's pointing at y. Uh, so if you're ever confused on that, that can help you. So this is my inequality. But I'm going to graph, so I'm going to draw my number line. I have negative 6, I have negative 5, and negative 7. So I want all the values less than negative 6, not including negative 6. So I'm going to have an open circle, and I'm going to have my arrow go to the left because it is less than, so I want the values lower than this one. For part b, I'm going to rewrite my inequality again. Negative 7y is less than or equal to negative 35. And I see that I'm multiplying y by negative 7. So to cancel out multiplication, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 7. But anytime I divide by a negative number, I need to flip this inequality symbol. So this less than or equal to is going to become a greater than or equal to. And I know the negative 7s are going to cancel, so I just have y here. And then I have negative 35 divided by negative 7 is positive 5. So now this is my simplified inequality. And then to graph this, I'll draw my number line. Put my values here. 5, 6, and then 4 on the left. And since this has the equal to, we're going to have a closed circle, which means we're going to fill it in. And then my values are going to be anything to the right of this on a number line, so anything larger than 5 on a number line. And th these are the solutions to this inequality. So now we're done. You earn $9.50 per hour at your summer job. Write and solve an inequality that represents the number of hours you need to work to buy a digital camera that costs $247. Well. My rate is $9.50 per hour. So all I have to do is multiply this wage right here, this rate, uh, and multiply it by the number of hours, and that gives me the total amount of money that I have. So if I, if I call my uh, variable h for hours, so I'll say, h equals hours worked. And I know that if I multiply my rate, 950, by the number of hours worked, I get my total amount of money. And I know I need at least $247 in order to purchase the new camera. Okay, So I am going to set this uh, value to be greater than or equal to. Um, $247. Because if I get $247, I can afford the camera. And if I get more than $247, I can still afford the camera. Okay. So now that I have set up my inequality, I am going to solve it. Okay. So I want to see what's happening to my variable h, and I am multiplying it by 950, or just 9.5. And so what I'm going to do is divide by 9.5 
on both sides. And the reason I'm saying 9.5 is that's just going to be easier to work with. Uh, this zero is unnecessary, but when we're dealing with money, we uh, go to two decimal places. Anyway, these are going to cancel out on the left side of my equation. So I get H is greater than, and then all I have to do is divide this 247 by 9.5. So I'll do that out here. So we don't want to divide with a decimal, so I'm going to move this over to get 95 and then add a zero here because I've moved the decimal over here. Um, and then I'm going to erase that so it doesn't look as messy. So this should be 95 and then 2,470. And then to see how many times 95 goes into 247, well, I know it's going to be 2 because 2 times 95 is going to be 190, and if I added another one, uh, sorry, if I added another 95, uh, that would be way more than 247. So I get 190, and then I'm going to subtract, I get 7 here, cross it out, and get 5, and then bring down my 0. And now I want to see how many times 95 goes into 570. So what I th I'm going to try um, to see if this goes in six times, and I'm going to just do that out. 95 times 6 gives me 30, and 6 times 9 is 54, plus 3 is 57. The reason I guessed 6 is because I know 9 times 6 is 54, so 95 times 6 would be instead of 540, it'd be a little bit higher. So I just guessed that, and it turned out to work. So I know it goes in exactly six times. So I need to make sure that I work, or our friend up here, what's her name? Oh, it's me. So I need to work, I need to make sure that I work at least 26 hours this summer so I can buy my $247 digital camera. So this is our inequality, and let's see, do we need to graph? Nope, we don't need to graph. This is the... Um, number of hours. We need to work at least 26 hours. And let's put that as a word answer. I need to work at least 26 hours to buy the camera. And now we're done.